in terms of do you remember when we was all do you remember when we was all um talking and commenting about Brendan Shaw before he did a special, right? So for Brendan Shaw put out his special, he was like, Hey, I'm betting on myself, I'm doing this big thing, I'm gonna put it out on Thick Boy, it's gonna be something that I put my own money into. I'm leaving Showtime. This whole weird narrative around leaving Showtime and betting on myself and putting on YouTube with the sort of stuff talking about getting all these offers, blah, 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 blah. And the common, I think, interpretation online, especially from my side of things, because I generally believe that wasn't the truth. I generally do think the guy got fired from Showtime because of just being a terrible, um, a terrible host on his own MMA show. I think the MMA show probably cost him his job more so than the comedy. I don't think they were that bothered that he got completely trolled and wrecked with the UB Surprise um, comedy special because I'm pretty sure on the back end, the views on that UB Surprise video are probably incredible. They're probably the 20, 50 millions now in terms of views. I'd imagine, don't get me wrong, I'd, I'm pretty sure that probably is a thing and they probably got loads of sign-ups off the back of it as well. So I'm sure that was fine, but that Below the Belt show, was so poorly done. If people think this stream is shit, imagine Below the Belt and you're showing it on Showtime and something he's getting paid crazy amounts of money. I'm not getting jack shit for this. I'm just here chatting shit to our webcam. So imagine him being a former UFC person, a sort of a former UFC heavyweight, being a top 15 guy, having all these credentials, knowing Rogan, and then having a piss poor average kind of MMA show. So I think that probably cost him his show. But then I understand that he tried to write this story, this whole like you know, um, this new narrative, as you like to call it, right, to kind of make him look like the hero in the story and to hopefully get people to kind of root for him. So you say, hey, you know, I decided to walk away from Showtime, right? I'm now taking my stuff and my comedy and putting it on my own platform. Hey, guys, support me. I'm going to put it up on YouTube. But we all knew that wasn't the truth. And mostly because the guy lies a lot about everything, Everything he lies. He lies about everything. So I think because of that, it cost him when maybe something's actually true. Because imagine if it is actually true and he actually did legitimately walk away from Showtime. They offered him a deal. Maybe it was a reduced number. Because that could happen too. Imagine he did a poor job with the blow the bill like I thought he did. And Showtime said, hey, we like you as a person, but we were paying you way too much. You're not worth this much. Here's what we want to give you. And then he's like, you know what? No, because I'm used to the money you gave me before. You know, no one, no one likes pay cuts or pay reductions. Even if you're shit at your job, no one's going to accept them happily. So then he says, I'm going to go somewhere else. So he could be telling the truth, but generally I think he's lying. But then it's funny because I then saw this post from Andrew Schultz online and genuinely, genuinely, the reception around this Andrew Schultz post um compared to what Brendan's receiving online, it is completely different. Now, obviously, it has to do with the comedian, because I always say on this show, I think for the most part, when it comes to low cows, when you think of people like Wings of Redemption, Boogie, Dark Side Phil, all these people, I think for the most part, bring, it's, most of the hate is because of them, right? They have reprehensible characters that do repre repre reprehensible things. People pick at them and just keep going and attacking them because they're horrible people. But then I also think like, with these kind of people, these stand-up comedian types, they sometimes are a bit unlucky because it's just a cut of their G people just don't like them. Like a Tony Hinchcliffe is a good example. I don't think Tony Hinchcliffe is a bad dude, but for the most part, people don't like to people don't tend to like Tony Hinchcliffe because of his nasally voice, because of how he acts and shit. He just comes across like somebody that you wouldn't like, that you wouldn't like in general. But for whatever reason, I feel like people tend to kind of give Andrew Schultz a grace, even though there's loads of things about Andrew Schultz that people should not like, right? The excessive laughing, the knee slapping, the, the you know, the way he talks and stuff and all that. You know, I mean, there's stuff about him that people generally, I don't think, should like, but they do like him in general. So when he announced this and that, when he put this announcement out about his new comedy special, it got a way more positive reception than I've ever seen, even on the Friday Kids subreddit. People are actually like, hey, this is how Brenda should have done it. This is what it looks like when you actually do back yourself. So it's interesting to see the optics, right, around it, like how the story you tell can be more believable or not believable based on how liked or not liked you are, which is obviously isn't a big revelation, but it's still very interesting to see because I still think this is a whole bunch of bullshit anyway. I still think they're all lying. This is all a bunch of bullshit. And I just think it's in incredible in general, the weird levels of self-importance people put on this sort of stuff, like, you know, like, I don't know, I've never really taken too seriously what people do online in terms of streams, in terms of content and stuff, I don't give a shit, do you know what I mean, I watch what I like to watch, I don't like what I don't like to watch, but 
I don't necessarily think like they're changing the world of a stream or they're changing the world of a comedy special or whatnot. But for whatever reason, these guys really believe the shit they're selling like to another level. And it's making me wonder in the same way where I thought to myself, I wonder if after covering all this, Andrew, Brendan Shaw, Brian Callan, Chris D'Elia, the final kid, all this fucking shit storm around them. I got away from it thinking to myself, I wonder if part of the secret ingredient of being successful online is to be incredibly unself-aware, to have no idea of how you're perceived and to think you're always the hero of your own story. Because I feel like if you generally believe that to your bones, right, to your fucking bones, there's literally nothing anyone can say about you that will ever matter. Because every time you look in the mirror, you always see the hero. And it always makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, everything makes sense. I am where I am. Da, 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 da. I don't know. I just I, I just get this feeling from them guys. Like, like they generally believe their chat. I don't think this is all bullshit. They generally believe that they're kind of fighting some sort of fight on the stage by telling jokes about, you know, social justice warriors and woke people and trans people. Like, they generally think they're doing something when in the larger scheme of things, no one outside of us who are real... That's the thing you have to think about it. There's fans of Andrew Schultz, or there's fans of comedians out there who go to see the people perform in shows, who buy their merch, who watch their YouTube videos and stuff, blah, blah, blah. But then there's also a very small subset of people like ourselves who probably just laugh at them and think they're all donuts for the most part. But then we all still pale in comparison or insignificance to the overall general public, the normies out there who have no idea what's going on. They don't know about Joe Rogan's changing political beliefs as he's become more and more wealthy. They have no idea about the intricacies of what's going on between the whole Brenda Schaub, Kalila and Eli Lederman thing. They don't know about any of that drama. They just watch the content, if they can see it and they can keep it moving. So it makes me laugh even more that they think they're so important because to the general public, no one knows who these people are. Do you know what I mean? But they generally believe they're hype. So when I saw this caption, this post from Schultz, it just made me think like number one, A, I think he's lying and number two, I generally believe I generally believe he believes what he's saying like he generally, this is like a fight you know what I mean, like against some invisible enemy, I don't know who the enemy is but anyway, um, as you see on the screen it says Andrew Schultz Infamous the special which is coming out on the 17th of July and you can pre-order Andrew Schultz website so he's basically doing what Louis C.K. has been doing for years right? You, Louis C.K. has been selling his own comedy specials on his website for a long time it's been super successful for him obviously super sorry successful for him obviously after the back of that whole cancellation of him you know ejaculating in front of fucking girls it probably was more handy to have the ability to just sell your comedy special on your site so no one could just you know try and cancel you or take away your deals and stuff so this is not like a new template and also the funny thing about this they always try and sell this like um they always try and sell this like a peter pan story or something but really this is far more lucrative than you could ever do anything with like a netflix or whatnot because as much as that one hit from a netflix or from a hbo or from a Comedy Central, if it was still, you know, popping and relevant or whatnot, or Hulu, as much as one hits are good, um, it's not reoccurring income, right? It's not something you're going to ever see again. So you might get 40 mil, but that's 40 mil for one time. But if you release it on your platform, you get to have reoccurring buyers, and you obviously own the content yourself outright. So then once you get people to buy it online, you can then put out the clips on, on social media, places like YouTube and shit and earn ad revenue on top so you can just keep making money after money after money at the back of this licensing to people it's insane so the idea that they kind of make it seem like it's us against them when this will end up probably making them more money or making them way more famous is insane but anyway the caption is the one that really gets me this is the caption for it let's see if we can get the whole thing on the screen here so we can see uh, the caption is one of the, the funniest thing that really gets me here so it says here um, Andrew Schultz my new infamous special is available to pre-order right now at andrewschultz.com. So, theandrewschultz.com. So, long story short, the original streamer refused to air the special without cutting several jokes. If you know me at all, I, can't be, I can be quite stubborn. So, instead of airing a watered-down version of the special, I spent my life savings and bought my special back. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. My gamble is that people want real comedy. Let's see. So pre-order now and spread the word so my wife doesn't divorce me. So there's clearly some sort of attempt here to try to convince us, the customers, that this is somehow him making a stand 
against council culture, against censorship, um, against wokeness or whatever it may be out there. And he's fighting a good fight and for the purpose of preserving the sanctity of comedy that he wants to present his special in its purest form. Because I'd imagine most stand-up specials, most of them anyway in general, right? If especially if they're on a network somewhere, they've definitely gone through the ringer of like, let me give you some notes. So somebody's gone through it, watched it and thought, you know what, this is too racy, this is too political, this is too topical, whatever. They've done some sort of edits here and there because, you know, whatever it may be. It's their platform, they own it and they don't want it to be looked, to, looked at a certain way. So this idea that any special that goes out, especially on a platform that isn't YouTube, or even sometimes YouTube, is completely 100% uncensored, is absolutely ridiculous. No special is uncensored. They've all been censored in some way. Whether it's you censoring them as a person, as a comedian, because you're, you know, um, you're flipping picky about your jokes, or you don't think that be, that thing that you said was funny, blah, blah, blah. There's always some sort of censorship. So this idea that he's, this is the selling point is really, really utterly bizarre and really, really strange in the first place. And then this whole, like, money thing as well, it's just a bit weird, I feel like, in general. Like, why is it anyone's responsibility? And again, this may be a bit of a bit rich coming from me because I've got my fucking Streamlab donation link in the fucking chat. But it feels a little bit DSP-ish, right? That you're making it people's responsibility to make up for the money that you have lost. Like, why should we care? We all know you make money, right? You... You know, you live a pretty decent life. You live in an amazing city. You have a great wife or family soon. So you're going to be starting a great circle of friends, um, a pretty decent career. We know you're, you're probably doing pretty well in your life right now. Why would, why would we be under any sort of assumption that us buying a comedy special is going to really change or move the needle for you? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I just... I can't, I, I don't buy it. I really just don't buy that. And I don't necessarily see why it's, why it's really important. And unless, unless I'm uninformed, and for the people who watch Flagrant, um, his podcast and stuff that he does, and for the people that keep in tune to everything else he does in terms of content, in terms of brilliant idiots and stuff, maybe be, maybe the word going around town is that the fact that he's moved into a new studio, the fact that he's maybe hired more people, and the fact that he's been doing a lot of touring, or I don't know, whatever, something, maybe there is a narrative going on with them in the studio and stuff that he's quote unquote broke. So this is kind of the continuation of that kind of story. But as a just casual observer and viewer of some of the stuff that Andrew Schultz does, it just seems a little bit, it just seems a little bit like a lie to me per personally. But like I said before, it's interesting to see how different the reception has been. Of course, the comments on here are different because, you know, the comments on these posts. But in general, if you go on the Friday the Kids subreddit and you just check people are talking, they seem to be very much pro this. This seems to be getting a lot more positive reception than I saw Brendan got. And most of it has obviously to do with Andrew because I guess he's a far more likable person. But I don't know. I, if I had to guess, if and this is again a controversial statement to make, but if I had to guess who's telling the truth out of Brendan and Schultz in terms of, oh yeah, I'm doing this my own, I would say probably Brendan. As crazy as that sounds, he probably is telling more of a truth than what Schultz is telling in terms of this because this is just a nonsense. Because I'd imagine if it was Schultz, most likely what ended up happening was that they probably wanted to take away too many jokes because they were just being picky and just wanting to control things, whatever, not because of anything woke, I don't think so. And then also the money wasn't as good as he probably thought it was going to be. So if they're being if they're being assholes and they're making you trying to change too much things and they're sticking their fingers in places that you don't want them to stick their fingers in, they're just being constantly annoying and shit, and they're also not offering you the money you think you're worth, it's probably a good option to leave. You probably got a good point to leave at that point, right? You're not as far down the process as you probably could be, without incurring any sort of penalties or whatnot. And then of course with everyone putting their stuff on YouTube anyway or on their own platform or their own site and stuff, why not do it that way? So I think that probably won't end up happening as opposed to this whole, like, I don't know. I, I, just, I just think, again, I'm going to probably get ruined in the comments for saying this, but I probably think Brenda's saying the truth more than Schultz is. Something just feels a little bit too rehearsy, scripty, and because this is tight. This caption is fucking tight. Like, this has gone, this has gone through a couple of copywriters. Do you know what I mean? Where you can find a special... Um, giving you a synopsis of the st of what's basically happened, the struggle, right? This is kind of the hero's journey. Um, he accepted the challenge, right? And now he's gambling on himself. 
the people want comedy, right? He's saying he's giving us a challenge, the people, right? Us. People want comedy. Let's see. Will we accept the journey? The challenge? Pre order now. I don't know, man. I don't know. But anyways, continue. Um the yeah, the comments here are pretty all positive. Tulsi fucking gathered in there, well done, stand strong. Like all these fucking free speech warriors, hot star free stars on there. Um who else is here? God on my young taco, of course. Um, Sega from the that show on YouTube, screw the streamer, we got you. Uh, I love that you did this. Russell Peters, fucking G, Weezy, yay. Lewis Howes, let's go. Put on YouTube, of course, people on there. Casual original streamer. L. Let's see what the original. Let's see what other people say. So it's only available for two weeks after we purchase it. What, what's the comments here saying? What's the comments? After that, after that, you'll have a dedicated link. Okay, cool. So that's a pretty interesting way of putting it out there. So it's available for two weeks. Um, to purchase on his website alone, then it'll go up everywhere else. Okay, fair enough. Um, but yeah, the com it seems to be pretty, pretty positive. Pretty positive on the comments here. So, if you were, so if you were, so again, to, to just to close this point out, if you were Brendan's friend and you actually did want to help him out, you would probably go a long way to just tell him, try and be more likable. Because I, I, maybe some of his personality, if you're a narcissist, you probably don't care that you're not liked, right? You probably think everyone else is wrong, right? Um, that makes a lot of sense, right? Narcissists probably think everyone's wrong. It's not, it's not my fault. But if you were generally trying to change the narrative about you online, just become more likable. Because when you're likable, you can get away with a lot. Shots is proving it. You can get away with a lot of fluff and a lot of lies and a lot of, you know... Mm, yeah, you know, white lies and embellishing all the truths and shit, and people don't really bat an eyelid. But when you're not like, people would dissect everything that you do. Do you know what I mean? To flipping nauseating details, never give you the benefit of doubt. Um, and for whatever reason, again, I think you know there are elements of shows that people should probably hate about his personality and how he kind of acts and carries himself. I like the guy. Don't get me wrong. I still think he has probably one of the best. The best debuts on Joe Rogan ever. That first appearance he did on JRE was fucking phenomenal. He absolutely smashed that shit out of the park. Like, he went there with an aim. Like, I'm going to fucking raise my profile out here. I'm going to also prove to Joe that I'm funny as fuck and I'm a cool hang. And he's going to want to be my friend. Like, and he absolutely smashed it. Like, legitimately. Andrew Schultz has one of the best Joe Rogan debuts I've ever seen of any comedian. Bar none. But I'm also aware that he's also, you know, somebody that I also take, for me, as a, as a fan of podcasts and stuff, I can only enjoy him in small doses. I can't do too much of him because, you know, it gets a bit annoying after a while. But for whatever reason, other people don't seem to pick up on it. They seem to like him completely. So I think sometimes you just, you know, if you're just a likable person, people let you get away with absolute murder. And if you were Brendan's friend, you would tell him, hey, man, maybe think about trying to be more liked. Do you know what I mean? Try and be more liked and maybe, and maybe, and maybe maybe people will end up um, giving you a bit more grace but again does Brendan actually care about that stuff really does he really want to change the narrative about him online or does he just think everyone that doesn't like him is an absolute dull ad and should be flipping sent to a goo like I don't know I don't really know but yeah that was the one so let's see um, will you be ordering um, Andrew Schultz's new special do you guys care in the chat will you be checking out his special um, I actually haven't watched one of Andrew Schultz's specials in my life I think I've seen a couple of his crowd work videos online. I think I thought those are really funny. But I've never actually watched a comedy special of his. I'm not sure how many he actually has out. But I've not watched a single one. Um, who said I will download it? 